Hiya, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm working on something other than what I usually work on. And it is a Volvoid, which has got an issue with the rear brakes. As you can see, the issue with this side is it doesn't have any. Um, can't do anything with that side, waiting for a caliper. But this side, I can't. And I've got disc and pads for it, so that's what I want to do. This video is changing the rear discs and pads on an Ovlov V70, one of them. So the first thing I need to do is jack it up in a stable and secure manner, which I've just put it, I say I've just put it, it was already jacked up when I got here because the guy whose car it is has already started doing the other side over there. And I'm just going to do this side for him while he's waiting for the caliper. Um, so I've got it jacked up on the rear subframe, and then the wheel can now be carefully removed. Yes. And we can use the wheel as hold on. Tay's a bit bald, I could do with a new one of them. But that's not what this video is about. We'll put the wheel there as a jack stand in case the car falls off the jack. And then there's our brakes. Right, let's so have a closer look at this, what we're going to need. Well, we're going to need a torch bit for that, but we'll come to that when we need it. Um, this has already been unplugged for the handbrake, but basically that plugs into there. And then to send the handbrake back, you've got two spade connectors inside there or a plug inside there and i just need to put some voltage to that if i go the wrong way it'll tighten up the brake if i go the right way then it will loosen off so i'll do that in a minute and i'm going to need 13 millimeter and whatever size they are or whatever's left of them because they're pretty fucked as well all right so as you can see we've got a bh2 res with 12 volt power supply to these and if i put this on here then it should work now, if it goes the wrong way, this is hard with one hand actually, but yes, that, that's gone the wrong way because it's tightened up. So now I go the other way and back it all the way off until it stops. Look at this. What the fuck about? You can see what I'm trying to do. I mean, sometimes you can use a 9 volt battery with the. Uh, wire coming out of it and you can do it with that as well but i've got a 12 volt one because it's faster for more power yes and i'll just keep on doing that until it stops so now i've very carefully done that until it stops i can take these two 13s out one there and one there nice and carefully I remove both of these. We we'll actually do have new ones of them. I'll remove that. And then this one. All the way. Keep on turning it. Yeah. And then this caliper now is free to be taken off of the disc. Now these, I'll clean them up as well in a minute, but that one's a bit sticky. I need to also take this caliper bridge off. But first, I've just placed the caliper back onto the disc to um, to push the piston back. So I've done the electronic bit, as I've just showed, which you can do through diagnostics, so you can take that, that motor off and fuck about that way, but it seems the easiest way is just put a battery on it. And then we just push, just push the piston back with the screwdriver the same way as what I did on the C1. Now, doing it this way... You can, you know, undo the bleed nipple so that you're not pushing the fluid backwards, but looking at that bleed nipple, I think I'm going to do more harm than good by undoing that. Famous last words, and I put the ABS pump up, but it's very lightly and very carefully until the piston is all the way in. Yes. Right, so as you can see, I've propped that up there nice and conveniently out of the way, and now I want to take these pads out. And as you can see, the pads and the disc, the disc in particular, is uh, 
definitely add as money's worth out of. Which I would advise always doing if you're going to wear out your parts on your car, obviously. Your brakes, you know you've had your money's worth out of them. If you wear it down so far, that pad is thrown out and clear from the vehicle. Now I'm going to try and pick this pad out, which you can't hardly see because it's that thin. Look at that. Yes. Yes. Nice. Right, so we've got those out. The next thing I need to do is I need to take this off. Which, as you can see, once I've bolts holding it in, but now has some sort of round. I don't know what sort of design they actually are. But we've got them to take out. My suspicion is that that was one to 14, so that's what size I've hammered onto it. And it feels like it's going to slip off. So I'd better get in a better position where I can't film it. Yeah! Woo! Awesome! And then the same for this one, which was even fucking worse. Because it's more awkward to get on, so I've had to use a 3 8 drive, um, just a little strong arm. It needs more of an actual strong arm to turn than a big strong arm. That's, it was fucking tight, really tight. But I've got it out. So now I'm gonna undo this all the way until I can remove the caliper ridge. Yes. So now that's off. I can take this disc off. And anybody who knows about brake discs will know that this disc is just about ready to be changed. If you look at them lips there, I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but the thickness of that disc is probably about half of what it should be, which is, you know, like I said, a good time to change it. So let's get the shitter off. And um, I need to unscrew this here, which looks like about a bit of T45 or something. So it is, in fact, a T50. should be the operative word. Yes. Like I said, I was saying about the quality of this disc. Definitely had his money without that. So, we're on the disc bits now. Give this a clean up best we can with a wire brush. So there are probably better ways to do it. You can sand it down with a file or whatever. But I'm gonna use a wire brush. Just to make that surface. So it's something like clean. As you can see. So as you can see now, that is brand new and shiny again. So it's ready for a new disc. And the observer amongst you might notice that this disc has been painted, even on the friction surface. You see a lot of things on Facebook and what have you, where people have painted the friction surface of the disc and like, oh, they're not going to have any brakes. Now what will actually happen is the pads will just clean it off when you first use it. So anyway, let's... Let's rest that on there. Right, we'll line it up nice and carefully to be in the right orientation. Something like that. And then, hopefully it'll stay there while I balance that there, while I get this with this bolt that I took out. And I put a bit of copper dick on it so it's nice and lubricated and doesn't seize up. And that doesn't have to be very tight because what actually holds the disc on is the wheel bolts they clamp the disc on that's just so it don't fall off while you're fucking about changing it or what have you right so now i need to clean this up and it's going to be the same again i'm just going to wire brush it so as you can see i've given that a quick wire brush off paying close attention to these bits where i've actually taken a screwdriver to take any high points off because they're what are going to cause any issues which are going to cause our pads to snag up or anything next thing i need to clean this so as you can see that is like really old shit grease and it needs cleaning off, so I've got myself a rag, some new grease, and some brake parts cleaner. So uh, to clean that best I can, which is going to be a struggle with one, so I'm going to have to uh, just say I've done it, and then you're just going to have to take the word for it. Yeah. Yes. That's not as hard as I thought it would be with one hand, actually. Right, let's see how clean I can get that. And the simple answer is cleaner than it was. So I've got some silicone grease there, which I've put in there because silicone grease doesn't attack the rubber or anything. Now the problem is, is when you put the silicone grease in, sometimes this happens where the grease is causing a seal around that and it's um, causing it to push back out. It's pretty sick. So I'll keep on working that until the grease actually goes in the right place. 
So now I've rectified that issue and done the other pin as well. So both of them are brand new and lubricated. I can now put this back on where it belongs around this location. Like so. And then we tighten it up by turning these bolts in a clockwise direction until it becomes tight. There will be a torque setting for this, but I'm just going to do them tight. And the same for the other one. Yes. Right, so this is one down pole later and um, swapping the pads because the pads we had were actually wrong. So now we've got the right pads, which fit better. And we're left with this. Well, unfortunately, these pads don't seem to come with new squeal shoes, so I need to clean them up. Just leaves them clean. Uh, now, some pads do come with new ones of these, and the other pads that I had did come with new ones of these, but they were the incorrect pads. So the new ones of these that came with their incorrect pads will also be incorrect. And these pads that I've got now don't come with new ones, so put them back in, and then we put these in. But what I need to do first is put a little bit of copper dick just on the ears of the pads basically the friction surfaces is what I like to put them now a little bit on there as well now these pads aren't too bad because they've got rubber coating on the back of them to stop them from squealing as such but a little bit of copper dick is better than no copper dick same with this shitter it's getting rained on which is also really good also helping the lubrication side of things and then that goes in in the same manner. Yes, I'm not filming anything, am I? Yes. Right, so both pads are now in. So now I can put this back on, which goes the same way as it came off, evidently. So now I've got that on there, and then these are the bolts. Sometimes the pads come with new ones of them as well, but this one hasn't done that. But it's okay, we can manage. And then I need to put this bolt into here and do the same with the other bolt. And then tighten those up, and then carefully tighten these to the correct torque setting. Anyone who's watched this channel before knows that. I'm just guessing what the torque setting is. About the Right, so when that's done, then I can plug this shitter back in to that shitter. It's just plugged back in. Like I said, that were already unplugged when I came to it because the guy whose car this is has actually started doing this job. Um, and what I would need to do now is... I need to pump the brake up and pump the electronic cam brake up. But before I can do that, I need to do the other side. I might as well, let's put the wheel back on. Because this side, apart from pumping the brake up and working the handbrake a couple of times, which I will do in a minute, is done. Yes. So now the wheel is on. I've got to build up the other side and then I will come back when the other side's built up and bled up and then, uh, Redo the handbrake by turning it off and on again a few times and pumping the brake pedal. Yes. Right, so now we are all done and back on the floor. So the wheels are back on the car and the brakes are even pumped up because that happened when it was bleeding it. But now we need to get the handbrake working. So the way of doing this is you basically apply it and take it off a few times from what I'm led to believe. And you can hear the motors working until well they seem to stop when the handbrake is actually on and i think that's it basically just press this a few times listen for the motor and when it stops it should be done yes all right so anyway that is pretty much it for the fuck off so the handbrake now if i take it off Press brake pedal to release handbrake. And that seems to be all working as expected. So 
that's it for this one don't forget to check out my other videos tell me where i've gone wrong all the usual shit and uh see you next time